Hey there, this is your girl Shawanda, and you're listening to Refreshing the Soul Podcast, a show where we bring our experiences and God's truth to refresh the heavy and hard places in your soul. From anxiety to unforgiveness, we'll learn how to come to an honest place in our souls and uproot those hidden lies so that you can discover the unique expression God created you to be in this world. Hey everyone, welcome back to Refreshing the Soul Podcast. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're listening and tuning in and allowing me to speak into the ears of your soul, the heart of your soul. And this month we are talking about the inadequate soul. And I just pray through this month that you receive a refreshing, your mind is renewed, you receive understanding of why you feel inadequate, that you learn how to come to an honest place with yourself and with God about where this could be coming from, the areas that you feel inadequate in, but that you really do receive a new, just new insight. You know, I was just thinking about this scripture again, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, which is what this podcast is founded on. You know, when we come to him with what's heavy Jesus, he says that he will teach us. You know, it says learn from him. So there's things that Jesus wants to teach us. He wants to teach us his way of living, his way of thinking, his perspective. And so no matter what heaviness or what we bring to him, there's always a way that Jesus has that if you're open and you're willing, you can receive that. And receiving his way is also receiving his yoke his way of living, his way of moving about the earth. So, you know, as I was thinking about this topic today, you know, I have to be honest with you. I've felt inadequate just with doing this podcast. You know, I have my own journey. I have my own struggles and things that I do battle with even this day. And for God to want to use me in this place, and there are things, yes, I have overcome. There are things that I have have been transformed out of, but it's still it's a lifelong journey. I mean, there's things that we're always going to be reaching, as far as Paul said. Like I'm reaching. I'm I haven't arrived at any place, and for me. And I guess it's, again, it's a mentality that's not a Jesus mentality, the way he thinks. But for me, it's I want to be able to express and be effective by saying, okay, this is what I went through. This is what God showed me. So now you can do this. But, you know, Holy Spirit has been using me while I'm in the middle of something, he's like, okay, now speak about it. And I'm like, God, I, Lord, I haven't even got finished with through the last part of this stage. I'm still in this. You want to use me while I'm dealing with inadequacy. He's like, yes, like I'm not limited by your limitations. I can still use you even when you feel like you can't be used. And so I just wanted to be bare and naked and honest with you that you know, even with doing this podcast, I don't feel I, well, let's just say, I, I shouldn't say I don't feel fit for the call. I know I'm fit for the call, but not the way that God had in mind. <laughs> and I think that's it. I think that a lot of our inadequacy thoughts and feelings come from this place of where we have a way of seeing things and the way it should go. And if we're not measuring up to it in the way that we see in our mind, we feel less than, we feel like we're lacking, you know, and God, he just, he doesn't see us that way. He doesn't see you that way. And I just wanted to be vulnerable for a moment to just share, you know, inadequacy. That's something I believe we've all felt at one point in our lives and are probably going to feel until the day we die, is how we deal with it, how to respond out of it, 
What do we tell ourselves when we do feel these things, when we do think we're not enough? And I'm hoping to help you with that today, the way that God has been helping me. I'm hoping to help you in that same way. And I want to share this devotional. My actually is from this morning. And it just, I was like, oh my God, this is right on time with what we're talking about. And the devotional is actually called, it's called A New Beginning. And the topic for today is called The Real You. So I'm just going to read it. It says, we live in a society that stresses image. It's easy to go through life trying to impress people, to show them that we're strong, that we have it all together. It's good to carry ourselves with confidence, but sometimes we have such a need to keep up our image that we put on a mask and start pretending. We can't let someone see that we have weaknesses, that we're struggling in areas, and we don't have all the answers. But the scripture says that if we go around wearing masks, God's power is not going to show up. God won't bless the ideal you, the pretended you, the future you. He's looking for the real you. Remember that there's power in vulnerability. When you empty yourself out, God can fill you. But if you're full of yourself, acting, pretending, keeping up your image. There's no room for God. If you'll humble yourself and get real, God will help you to grow. I love this devotion because first we got to get real with ourselves. We have to get real with the place of, okay, am I trying to put on because really inside I don't feel like I'm not enough. Am I trying to be something more then I feel like I have to be this idea that I have planted in my mind or is this truly the real me? And we have to be real with God because, you know, at the end of this, he says, look, if you humble yourself and get real, God will help you to grow. We want God to help us to grow out of this place, this place of where we feel like we do have to wear a mask in order to be something that others want us to be. And I think that's one of the reasons why even this month that I was even feeling inadequate because I know there's some people who, (laughs) you know, when they listen to Bible stories, old Bible stories in a Bible, it's like, oh, well, that's an old, that's old, that has nothing to do with us today. But for me, that is how God has grown me and how he wants me to share it with you guys. It's through these Bible stories. That's me being real and authentic with who I am and who God is in me. But if I try to fit the audience of those who don't want to listen to Bible stories, then I'm not being real. I'm trying to be enough for someone else. And there may be an audience out there who's never read the Bible, who don't like hearing about Bible stories or never even thought of it in this way. And who hears the stories being brought alive in their life. And they're like, wow, you got that from a Bible story? Like, I've heard this. Like, when people are like, this makes me want to read the Bible. So when we're not real with ourselves, and in turn, we wear masks and we're not real with others, we're doing things to fit and be adequate enough for them. We're neglecting not only ourselves, but the people who we are really called to. And so... The scripture that goes with this devotion is actually one of the scriptures that I like to meditate on and just speak and profess over my life. And I'm going to read it first in in NLT is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 that says, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. And that's Paul. Paul is speaking of a time where he had this thorn in his side. We don't know exactly what it is, but it does say that it is a messenger sent by Satan. So to me, I think it's a message, a word, or something that kept gripping Paul's heart. But that's just my thought. But it was a messenger sent by Satan. And Paul went to Jesus saying, hey, listen, (laughs) three times he went to him and he was honest. He was real. He was like, can you please just get this out of me? Because I feel like I'm not enough. 
I'm feel I feel like because this is here, I'm not able to do what you have called me to do. I'm not able to be what you called me to be. And he said each time he said, "My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness." Now, I like the I want to say it is the amplified version of this of this scripture. So again, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough, always available, regardless of the situation. For my power is being perfected and is completed and shows itself most effectively in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly boast in my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may completely enfold me and may dwell in me. Wow. God's grace is sufficient for you. His love and kindness, his mercy is always available. And not only that, his grace and his strength is perfected and works stronger when we submit to the fact that we're not enough, that we need him, that on our own, we are weak. And I've had to surrender and learn that it's okay to be weak because I get to rely on a strength that's not my own. I get to rely on God's strength. I get to see his power work in me. So even though I may not feel fit in a place of where I'm having to express my voice and maybe not everyone gets it or not, guess what? I have to allow God's power to work through me and let him be enough in me and trust that he's enough. And I wonder too, if we need to be honest with the fact that are we trusting that he's enough? Like just be honest right now. Are you Do you trust that God is enough in you when you're not enough? Because sometimes we can try to perform ourselves into adequacy. We will do all the things to hold the whole world together. We will do all the things to not let something slip. That can be as a mother, as a father, as a daughter, as a teacher, whatever your position, your role. I get that we don't want our world to fall apart. And we want things to just work out smoothly. God wants you to have an abundant life too. But God is more concerned about what's going on in your soul that could be weighing you down, holding you back. And he doesn't want you to pretend. And he doesn't want you to do it alone. You don't have to hold the whole world together on your own. He's saying, listen, I'm going to work best in you when you let me. That's really what it is. When we give our weaknesses over to to Christ. And sometimes that looks like getting up in the morning before you have to start your day and just saying, you know what, God, today I need you. I'm tired. I don't feel like going to work. So I know it's your strength that's going to get me through because in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and 9, your word says that your strength works best in my weakness. And right now I feel weak, but I'm going to trust even just for this day, like today, God, that you're going to give me the strength that I need to be enough for my kids, on my job, as a sister, brother, for students, whatever the role is for my business, for my clients, whatever it is. That right there is just your submission, your surrenderance to God's strength and not your own. When we stop trying to perform out of a place of trying to be adequate, I believe that's when God's power can work and flow through us. And so I want you to really, I want you to ask yourself, you know, what area in my life do I feel inadequate? And maybe it's more than one area. But 
what area or areas in your life do you feel inadequate? Like be honest, be honest about it. And then ask yourself, is this pressure that I'm putting on my own self? Is this something that I feel like I have to do on my own? You know, is this all coming from me? And then I want you to ask yourself, have I given this to God? Have I surrendered this fully to God? And you know, it may not be just one time. I'm telling you, almost daily I have to do this and say this and believe this. Not because of every day I feel inadequate, but I just want to cover myself for the day. I don't know what's going to happen that day, but just getting myself in this word and reminding myself who I am and who God is, it just covers me in a way where if something happens, I know that I don't have to be weak. That word just comes back up in me. I know that I don't have to be strong, excuse me, in my own strength because of his strength. That's where I'm strong that I don't have to force, I don't have to manipulate, I don't have to try to will and deal things. But Father, you work through me. You have your way, Father, in me. Holy Spirit reminded me of a prophet he called at a very young age who felt inadequate. And his name is Jeremiah. And over in Jeremiah 1, Jeremiah talks about how he heard the Lord tell him, you know, I knew you before I formed you, before you were even in your mother's womb. And I called you to be a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah's response was, well, Lord, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. And, you know, the funny thing about it is I thought I was like, you know what? The Lord said, listen, I knew you before I, you know, before you were informed, before you were in a thought in your mother's womb. Jeremiah didn't hear none of that. He didn't hear how God ordained him, the fact that it was God who knew him, that it was God who formed him, that it was God who fashioned him together, this fearfully and wonderfully made person. Jeremiah didn't hear that. All he heard was, I called you to be a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah probably was like, nations, like as in there's an S on the end of that, nations, (laughs) And the first thing, you know, he got triggered and said, that's too much for me. I'm not adequate for this call. I'm not adequate to be a prophet. And then he says, why? Because I'm too young. And I just want us to talk about that over just the next few weeks about our, just how we see ourselves, where this inadequacy thought process, our feelings, where it comes from. And I really want us to really dig into this and get to a place of where we see ourselves properly through the eyes of God and that we don't allow words to grip our hearts so much that we're weighed down by it because of fear, fear of what we think we're not, but that we can come to a place of this confident peace in God where if you call me, if you whether it is it doesn't have to be a prophet just even as a mother to your your three kids even if it's to be right now you're in a season you're a daughter or a son who is taking care of you know your parents whatever season you're in or whatever role you have that you know that if you're called to it and you're in this place that you know you're supposed to be in that you know you have to do that it's God's strength in you that's allowing you to do it, that's making you capable enough to do it. That actually brings me to another scripture that I love to I love to also read and meditate on because it's just it's just a reminder that it's not me, it's not us that makes ourselves adequate, but it's our Father. It's the one who works through us. But we have to be we have to surrender to that strength. And so this one's in 2 Corinthians also. It's chapter 3. It's verse 5 and 6. And this is Paul. He's talking again. And I'm going to read, I'm going to read an NLT version first. And it says, verse 5, it is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God 
verse 6, he has enabled us to be ministers of his new covenant. This is a covenant not of written laws, but of the spirit. The old written covenant ends in death, but under the new covenant, the spirit gives life. Wow. I mean, he says, I don't even allow my thought to even go to a place that I have to be qualified. He said, it is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. And right here in this place right now, don't over-spiritualize this. It, yes, this is in the word, this is in the Bible, but he said anything. So whatever that thing is, you don't have to think that you have to be qualified to do it on your own. Don't you know that God is with you? You are not alone. In verse six, he says, Well, right after that, he says, our qualification comes from God. He has enabled us. That means there's something that God has put in me to be able to do the task. So it's not that you don't have what it takes. You don't have what you, what you need. It's, do you believe it? And are you surrendered to it? And that's, we got to be honest. We have to be honest with God. And bringing our inadequacies to him. But we have to be honest with ourselves. Are there areas, are there places in my life where I I have not just allowed God to just work in me, to just to let his strength flow through me? And maybe you don't know what it looks like. Maybe you don't know what that feels like. But I'm going to tell you, it's just even from verse five, it says, it's not that we think we are qualified. So first it starts in the way that you are thinking So that goes back to my question, am I putting pressure on my own self? Is this starting first in my head that I have to be? The Passion Translation of of that verse five says, yet we don't see ourselves as capable enough to do anything in our own strength for our true competence flows from God's empowering presence. And that's him again saying, listen, our perception of ourselves, the way that I'm even viewing myself. And that goes back to our soul, that our soul is the way we perceive, think, feel, and choose. So before we can get to feeling inadequate and choosing things, as far as even performing out of adequacy, we got to go back to that perception. And so how are you perceiving yourself? Like take a moment and really be honest about, am I putting a pressure on myself that is coming from me because I feel like I have to be qualified to do this. And again, it could be anything. And verse six in the Passion Translation, he says, he alone makes us adequate ministers who are focused on an entirely new covenant. Just those first five words, he alone makes us adequate. Mm. He alone not me alone. He alone makes us adequate to do whatever it is. So I just want to encourage your hearts today that you're not alone, but you have to believe that you're not alone. You have to surrender to what God has already enabled in you and put in you and believe that it's there. It wasn't until last year that I really got a a really good grip on the strength of God. And I'm going to tell you, each morning I would ha- I would have to start off with these type of scriptures to get me through the day because I didn't want to go to work. There's just too much that I was overwhelming myself with, a feeling of what I had to do on my own. And I surrendered to the fact, I'm like, Lord, you have me. You, It's your power that works through me. It's your strength. God, I need your strength. And let me tell you, I would... It was like I would have the strength and the energy to do what I need to do at work. I would come home, cook, you know, play with my kids, whatever it is that they needed. I'm not saying there weren't times where I missed things or I wasn't tired. It's not it's not that, but I could tell there was a different type of flow to my day. There was a different type of energy, almost a supernatural strength I would have until the end of my day. And if anybody knows me, like I'm the type of person, I'm sleep, I'm dead by probably 
eight thirty, nine o'clock. Here, I mean, I'm up. I'm still getting my rest. Don't get me wrong, but I'm. I don't feel so exhausted in my spirit, in my soul, in my body, the way I was before. Trying to do everything on your own and trying to do it out of your own strength and come up with all these ideas so that you don't miss a step or miss a beat. It's exhausting. And it all stems from a place of feeling inadequate in your soul. And we're going to get to the root next week of really where it's really coming from. Why do we even feel that way? Why do we even think that way? And I just pray that you just even for this week, really get to an honest place with God and examine the areas of your life of where you are probably overexerting yourself when you don't have to, where you have allowed a lot of pressure to build up in, in your soul because you feel like you have to be enough by yourself or because you feel like you have to do everything on your own. And that's not God's intention for you. He wants you to know that he's there with you. He's walking this life out with you. He wants to help you. That's why he brought the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to bring a helper. You weren't designed to do this on your own. And I just believe you will find rest and you will find a refreshing in this place as you yield to the Holy Spirit and surrender to his strength. So let's just end with confessions for the soul and confessions for the inadequate soul. And when I say inadequate soul, I'm not saying that you are inadequate. I'm just saying that maybe there's, there's a place in you that you think that you are an area or areas in your life that you think you that you are. And one of the ways that I have combated those thoughts is by just saying, you know what, I'm not enough. You're right. I'm not enough because I don't have to be not on my own. That's who God is. And so maybe this week you can leave with just even that truth because it is a truth that we are not enough. Paul said he alone makes us adequate. So without him, I'm not enough. So if you have that thought of feeling like, gosh, this is too much for me. I can't do this all on my own. Just say, and talk back to yourself and say, you know what? You're right. You can't do this all on your own. You're right. This is too much for you. But with God, it's not. With God, I can do this. And with God, I'm going to allow him to work his strength and his grace and his power through me because it's already in me. And so let's end with the confessions. So just take a moment and repeat after me. God is the source of my strength. He alone makes me adequate. So I lay down the weight and pressure I put on myself to be enough. I can do all things which he has called me to do, not because of my own strength, but because he strengthens me and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I don't see myself capable enough to do anything in my own strength for my ability to be successful comes from God. I am fit for the call. Right here, I want you to insert the place that you feel inadequate in. I am fit for the call as a mother. I am fit for the call as a father. I am fit for the call as a teacher. I'm fit for the call as a podcast host. Whatever that is, I am fit for the call because he called me. Amen. 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 Thank you again for tuning in with me, listening. Stay tuned to next week's Refreshing the Soul, Finding the Root. We're going to find the root to what is making us feel inadequate. Where are these inadequate thoughts coming from? 
How can I start to begin to get to a place where I can start uprooting these thoughts and ideas and really fully expressing who I really am, the real me. So I look forward to speaking to your souls next week. Until then, bye-bye. All right, everyone, that wraps up this week's episode. Thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast so we can get refreshing to those souls who need it. Also, don't forget to head over to Amazon where you can purchase that 30-day devotional Rest for the Soul by yours truly. Um, You want to get it in your hand. And just remember, soul care is self-care. Until next time, bye-bye.